Good morning. Okay, as promised, let's go over some Excel stuff. Let me share my screen here. I have a zillion things open, so oh, there we go. That looks like the right one. Okay. All right, so we had some data that we looked at. Okay, so we had our trials, one through six. Okay, so our mass is there. We had 9.6 grams, 9.8, 10.3, 10.0, 10.8, and 9.5. Excel doesn't like to do 10.0 unless you tell it to. So remember, we can highlight our cells. We can right click, format cells. We go to number, and we're going to keep our one decimal place. Okay. So now we need to start doing our analysis. So we're going to look at the deviation. So to get the deviation, we need that average or that mean. So to get the mean, we're gonna type in equals the word average, parenthesis. We're gonna start with cell B2. We're gonna go down to cell B7, close parenthesis, and you can see Excel highlighted the whole thing. I'll hit enter, and now I get my mean. Make sure that you put the equal sign in front of your equation, otherwise it will not calculate it. If I just type in average, it's not going to know that I want it to do a, um, a formula. Okay, now we need the deviation. So remember, every single measurement is going to deviate from the mean by a certain amount. Okay, so to get the deviations, we're going to take the... Uh, value of our measurement. So in this case, it's in cell B2, and we're going to subtract from that the mean. Now, when we drag our formula down, we want our formula to do each individual trial, but the mean stays the same the entire time. So in order to get Excel to keep the mean cell from changing, I'm going to hit dollar sign B dollar sign eight. And so the dollar sign in front of the B and the dollar sign in front of the eight tells Excel when I drag the formula down, do not change cell B8. It stays the way it is. So I hit enter, and there's the deviation in my first measurement. I'm going to click on this box. I'm going to wait until my cursor changes to that plus. So you can see the difference. We've got this wide plus and then this narrower plus. Once I get there, I'll click on this little green box and drag it down. Okay. When I drag it down, you can see that it goes from cell B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, and it leaves cell B8 alone because I did the dollar sign. To do our standard deviation, we need the square of the deviations. So we need everything to be an absolute value. So we're gonna do the absolute value of the deviation. And so that's equal ABS, parenthesis, cell C2. So you can see where it highlights cell C2 there. I hit enter and it gives me the absolute value. And I'm going to drag down. Okay. And then we need the deviation squared. So if you want to show a superscript in your cell, what you do is up here in this box, you're just going to highlight the number two. And then when we go through here, we can do a format cell. And I highlighted that number two. So I'm going to click superscript, click OK. And you can see where it's superscripted only that number two that I highlighted. Up here, it stays the same because this doesn't show you any formatting. But down here in the cell itself, it did superscript the number two that I highlighted. Okay, we need the square of each of those numbers. So I'll do equals, parenthesis, I need the square of cell D2. So I'm going to do D2, and then I'm going to do this little caret symbol. That's to the power of, and then 2, and then I'm going to drag down. Okay, and there are all of my deviations squared. And then we need the sum of those. So sum of deviation squared. And 
And then we'll get equals SUM cell E2 through cell E7. Boom. There's the sum of my deviation squared. Now I can plug that into that equation that I gave you in class. We're going to take the square root of this number or whatever your particular number is. So the square root of the sum of the deviation squared over n minus 1. So in this case, my n minus 1 would be 6 minus 1 because I had 6 trials. Your n minus 1 will be 8 minus 1 because you had 8 trials. Okay. And then once you show me that full calculation, then you are allowed to go ahead and use these tools to get your standard deviation. So if I want um, the standard deviation of all of my data, I do equals ST, DEV, parenthesis, first data points in cell B2, last data point is in cell B7, close parentheses, there's my standard deviation. I have one decimal point, so I'm going to round this to one decimal point. Format cells, uh, number, one decimal point. Okay, so my standard deviation would be 0.5. Okay, so that is how you can use Excel to start to do some of your spreadsheet data analysis. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. And... Um, Again, I'm not all that well versed with uh, Google Sheets. I think most of it works the same, but Excel is the program that I'm used to using. So uh, if you have questions about Google Sheets, I can try and help you. I can, you know, delve into it a little bit when I have a chance. But Excel is really the one where I'm going to be a lot more successful in helping you utilize uh, the software that's available. So. Hopefully that helps, and hopefully we start to get really good at some of this data analysis this semester.